guiding us and helping us to continue in our worship of the Lord and in our expressions of faith toward him. God bless you. God bless you. Turn, if you will, today to the uh, book of Psalms, to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. As you're turning there, uh, again, our theme, of course, for the month is dealing with uh, Thanksgiving, and we will look at verses 1 and 2 from Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. And they read as follows, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Our theme again is thanksgiving. Our subject is simply taken from the verses here that uh, is, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. There is the story of a man who was sitting on his church, uh, I'm sorry, his home porch, and uh, he was crying, he was in tears, he was depressed, and a friend walked by and asked him, why are you crying? What's the matter? Is there something that I can do to help? And the man responded, you just don't know, but two months ago, I received a call that my grandfather had left me in his will for $500,000. And he began to cry again. And so the friend said, well, that's uh, I know sad, and yet there was something in that. Uh, 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 but why are you still crying? And he said, well, that was two months ago. He said, last month, I got another call that my uncle had left me in his will for $1 million. And he just broke down and cried again. So his friend said, well, why are you still crying? Uh, what's the matter? He said, you just don't understand. This, this month is almost over and nobody's called to leave me anything. <laughs> Sometimes folks are like that, that nothing makes them happy. They feel as though they have nothing to be grateful for, that uh, nobody or anything, not even the Lord, has given them anything, anything. The psalmist says here that we are to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That means to give God praise, to show affection to the Lord, uh, show gratitude for all indeed that the Lord has done. We need to develop a spirit of thanksgiving, a spirit of thanksgiving. Uh, Bishop Ross so eloquently last week uh, preached on thanksgiving being a choice. It is, and we should develop that spirit of being thankful. We ought to think about certain things uh, in life and so our gratitude for it, especially when it comes to giving thanks unto the Lord. We're going to look at in this passage, in this 103rd Psalm, uh, some points as to what we ought to think about. We ought to think about what the Lord has given us. We're going to look at what the Lord has not given us. And we're going to look at what the Lord is going to give us. Let us look at the first uh, few verses here uh, from Psalm 103, and we'll look at, uh, uh, first of all, the first 
seven verses here. The psalmist is saying again, as you see that projected, you can follow on your uh, iPads or your phones or follow on the projection. Uh, psalmist is saying again, verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In other words, bless the Lord with our intellect, bless the Lord with our feelings, bless the Lord with our emotions, everything that is within us, we ought to be willing to utilize to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with our brains. Bless the Lord with our hearts. Bless the Lord, indeed, with our minds, with our lungs, and with our tongues. All that is within me, bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. All his benefits. Uh, Sister Chavis brought up in the Sunday school lesson this morning about the benefits that we have that we ought to be thankful for uh, when it comes to blessing the Lord. What is it that David says here who wrote this psalm in verse 3? Who forgives, looking at the benefits now, who forgives all your iniquities. I think it's important that David mentions this as the first and the greatest benefit that we have from the Lord. It is the Lord who forgives, he says, all of your iniquities. In other words, all of our sins. We need to acknowledge, we need to confess that we are sinners, and at our best, sinners saved by grace. And we still need forgiveness uh, from the Lord. Uh, we need to acknowledge, if we're going to be followers of Christ, we have to confess our sins to acknowledge that to ourselves and to the Lord that we want forgiveness of our sins. David says, first of all, bless him, all of his benefits, for his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Some of you may think, and mistakenly so, that uh, the Lord hasn't healed me of anything. Well, I want to tell you that he indeed has. He's, he's healed you. If, if, if God hasn't healed you of anything, you wouldn't be here today. Uh, uh, all of us are going to leave this world with something, but God has healed us of some things, and that's why we are still here today. He said he forgives your iniquities, he heals all your diseases. He, he allows us to recover and to live. That's why we're here. Verse 4, who redeems your life from destruction. In other words, bless him for the benefit of providing a way of salvation, uh, uh, delivering us, redeeming us. He is saying your life from destruction in order that uh, 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 you don't go to hell. And that is, if you don't repent of your sins, uh, uh, that's the direction that uh, you'll be headed. But God has provided a way that we can be forgiven and, and be delivered and be redeemed so that our lives are saved from hell, from destruction. Verse 4, who crowns you with loving kindness and mercies. In other words, God, the benefit is that he has spared us. The loving kindness and, uh, David says, the tender mercies. That word mercy, we're going to see it again as we read through this psalm. Verse 5, who satisfies another blessing, another benefit, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Uh, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. It is the Lord who satisfies our mouths with good things. What he's talking about here is not food. Uh, you can say that, and you can limit it to that. He provides food for us to eat, and everybody likes to do that. But what he's talking about here, providing us uh, uh, with, uh, uh, satisfying our mouths with good things, is that we are able to be witnesses for the Lord. 
that we can express thanksgiving rather than cursings. We can bless the Lord and express thanksgiving. You may think that life is hard on you. You may uh, be suffering. You may be dealing with something. You may be down in the dumps. You may think that God has given you a, a, a wrong turn in life, but you can always stop and think about it and have to say that it could always be worse. It could be worse than what it is now. God satisfies our mouth with good things. Our testimony ought to be that life is not all bad, that God blesses us with some good things and some good days so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. In other words, he makes you strong. And it is the Lord who will cause you and help you to excel in life like the eagle excels above the earth. Verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed, that he takes care of you. He takes care of us. When we have been victimized, and all of us have been victimized in some way or another, it is the Lord, the psalmist says, who executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. It is the Lord who picks us up when the circumstances or others may knock us down. God is one who is righteous and he is just, especially upon those who are oppressed. Verse 7, he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. It is the Lord, the psalmist is saying, who uh, always reveals himself unto us, made known his way uh, to Moses. He lets those who reverence him know who he is and indeed what he has done. So we ought to bless the Lord uh, because of what he indeed has given us. We see that in these first few verses, in these first seven verses, that he's given us forgiveness, he's given us healing, he's given us protection, he has given unto us great things, he has given unto us those things that are blessings unto us. And so we ought to bless the Lord. He's given us love, he's given us tender mercies, he's picked us up, he has established and provided a way that we do not uh, have to go to hell, or oh, we ought to bless the Lord. Bless him for what he has given us. Now we're going to look at the next few verses. And bless the Lord for what he has not given us. And that's verses 8 through 13. And they read as follows. Verse 8, the Lord is merciful and gracious. Remember, uh, early in verse 4, we talked about his loving kindness and tender mercies. In verse 8, he's bringing that word back into play here. The Lord is merciful and gracious, that he is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. It is the Lord who is merciful toward us. In those uh, words and in that verse, uh, uh, as the Lord is abounding, the psalmist says, in mercy. Uh, uh, but don't take his mercy for granted. Uh, he wants us to know and to understand that because God is merciful, we ought not think we can just get by with any and everything we want to do and think God is just going to ignore those things that we may be guilty of don't, don't take it for granted. Don't play games with God. Understand that he is merciful. But look at verse 9. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He will not always strive. He will not always accuse us. God will not always. We, you know that that is true. When, 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 when you step out of bounds, God doesn't smack you every time you do something wrong. 
you ought to be grateful. God hasn't stepped on you nor eliminated you. Every time that you have sinned against him, that's because of his mercy, of his mercy. But uh, the psalmist is saying here that even though he is merciful, that he will not always strive with us. He'll not accuse us. God does get tired of sin. God does draw a line. You might get by today, uh, but if you continue in wrong toward the Lord, you might get by tomorrow. But if you continue in sinning against God, God has a cutoff point, and he has a line that is drawn. God does get angry. He does get angry, and he has to punish when it comes to sin. The word is saying here, he'll not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Verse 10, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Oh, you ought to be grateful and thankful that God is like that. Uh, 11th verse, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those, that word again, mercy, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As the heavens are high above the earth. We have different uh, 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 areas and stages of the heavens. We have above this earth uh, uh, what is called the toposphere. And uh, that's where we can see from where we stand looking up and we can see what's in the skies. We can uh, 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 see the uh, uh, clouds there, and we can see the things that may even be above the clouds. And above that is the stratosphere. Uh, that's where the other planets are, uh, above the Earth, and uh, uh, where you need a telescope uh, to see those things that are higher. We're talking about as the heavens are high above the earth. As you can look up and see some of what's above us, you can get a telescope and see other parts and uh, 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 creations that are above us. But then there is the heavenly sphere. In that area, we cannot see. That area, no telescope can see. It is that area, the psalmist is saying, from here to there, that God's mercy is extended, that we have that area above us, that wide space and area. Oh, he is saying, so great is the mercy of the Lord upon those who fear him. Verse 12, as far as the east is from the west. How far is the east? from the west. Well, you can go east and keep on going, and you'll never stop going. You can go west and keep on going and never stop going. The psalmist means here, as far as the east is from the west, so far is the mercy of the Lord extended, he is saying unto us the heavens being high, east being uh, uh, far from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, verse 13, so the Lord pities those who fear him, who fear him. We find that what God has not given us in these verses, he's been good to us in that he hasn't punished us like we deserve to be punished. That's all that David is saying in this passage. And that's why we ought to bless the Lord that he hasn't punished us as we deserve. Let us look at uh, the final portion here, verses 14 through 18, what the Lord is going to do, why we ought to bless him, why we ought to bless him. Verses 14 through 18. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. He made us out of dust. He knows our frame. He knows we're weak. 
he made us uh, uh, because he remembers that we are dust. Verse 15, as for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. As the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. These Just these three verses, all that means is we're going to die. The time is coming when we all are going to die. Uh, that's what he's saying. God knows that. God remembers our frame. He remembers uh, uh, that we are but dust. Uh, but uh, 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 at death, when we know him, verse 17, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, on those who have given their lives unto the Lord, his mercy. That's what he's going to give continually, his mercy from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. God will be merciful and show righteousness to your children. He'll show mercy and righteousness to your grandbabies. He'll show mercy and righteousness to future generations if you are obedient unto him. He says in verse 18, he'll do that to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. Oh, church, remember, you can be thankful and bless the Lord for what he has given you, for what he has not through punishment given you, and for what he's going to give you, and that's mercy everlasting. The last verses of this psalm, 19 through 22, the psalmist said, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. The Lord is over everything. He's over everything. Bless the Lord because he's over everything. Verse 20, bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word. In other words, David is saying to the angels in heaven, Bless the Lord, you who do his works, uh, his word rather, uh, heeding the voice of his word. Those are the angels who speak for the Lord. David is saying, you ought to even bless the Lord. In verse 21, he says, bless the Lord, all you his hosts. He's talking about the angelic host who fight for the Lord. Don't you know God has some protection around us uh, with angels, not only who speak for him, but who fight for him and for us. We find uh, David going on to say, bless the Lord, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. He's talking about his pastors. He's talking about his preachers. He's talking about all of his believers when he's talking about ministers. Oh, don't think he's just limiting that just to one or a few. He's talking about everybody who knows the Lord. Bless the Lord, all of you who are believers and who live for him, who do his pleasure. Verse 22, bless the Lord, all his works, everything that God has created. The psalmist is saying, bless the Lord. He is saying all his works in all places of his dominion, everywhere that we are, we ought to bless the Lord. Everywhere that we go, we ought to bless the Lord. Not just in church, not just on Sunday, but everywhere that we go. In our homes, on the job, everywhere that you go, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And he concludes it by just saying, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, church, we ought to bless the Lord. In this season of Thanksgiving, be reminded of all of the great things that God the Lord has done for us, all of the things that he's given us. They're listed here, and there could be more. 
we find. Uh, the song we sing sometimes, count your blessings. Good song, good thought. Try to do it. Uh, you're going to leave out something because he's done so much. He's done so much. Another song we sang, he's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. Just can't tell it all. God is good, church. He's good, and we ought to bless him uh, for his goodness that he's given us. All the wonderful things. Bless him for what he has not given us, the punishment that we deserve. Bless him for what he's going to give us. And that is continued mercy on through eternity that will never end if we fear him and are obedient unto his word. If there's anyone today desiring uh, to take full advantage of this opportunity uh, to, 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 to give your life to the Lord and to repent of your sin, uh, to unite uh, with, with the church, to give your life to Christ, uh, to acknowledge that uh, you know that you're a sinner, but you want to be saved from your sin. That's the first and greatest blessing of all that you can receive, that coming from the Lord, that great gift of salvation, it is yours when you make that decision and follow through with it. We encourage and invite you to come to give your life to Christ, to accept Jesus as your Savior and be willing to live the rest of your life for him. When you do that, God will give you what you need to do it. He will give you his grace. He will give you his spirit. He will give you his presence, his power to help you live for him. If you're here and desire to come, the invitation is extended to you. If you're uh, willing and desiring to come and uh, give uh, your hand to the Lord if you've strayed from church, uh, the same invitation is applicable for you also, that you may come and unite with people of God uh, to live as one of God's sheep. If you're desiring prayer today, Whatever those needs might be, the invitation is extended to you. As the brotherhood sings, let us stand. And whosoever will, whosoever will, let him come unto the Lord. And the Lord will receive you with the right spirit. The Lord will hear you. We can draw close to him and be the children that God would indeed have us to be. Whosoever will, let him come.